So this this first lightning talk is is titled um, in a in a way that will I was sure would please the uh, the team of uh, Circle.lu because it's it's titled so that you would think it's about MISP, right? Because MISP is put in place to combat global inefficiency inefficiency for socks when it comes to anything and everything that you can share between each other on MISP. But there are certain things that you can't share between each other on MISP because they don't as such exist in a structured way. And before I get to that, let me take a step back and say I'm going to make probably two controversial statements today that are likely to cause a lot of you a lot of discomfort, if not even make you feel anger. The first one is there is no company today or entity, government entity, whatever, that has any idea whether or not, when it comes to detections, whether or not they have an adequate detection coverage for the threats facing them. There is no single company in the world that has any idea if they have enough. Why is that? It's because security, including detection engineering, is not a science. There is no scientific approach. There is no standard framework. There is no agreed way to do it. The closest we come, which is a great communicator tool, is MITRE ATT&CK, which was built by taking all the procedures that MITRE had, the data available to know of, which they aggregated into tactics, techniques, and sub-techniques. So MITRE ATT&CK in, is an aggregation layer over what attackers actually do. The procedural level is where the fun stuff starts when it comes to detection engineering, but not where it finishes necessarily. John Lambert was name dropped earlier, and he says that every attack leaves a trace. As long as attackers think in graphs and defenders do not, attackers will win. And he says that anything, for example, a red team does should be available as a graph to the blue teams. All right, back to global inefficiency. What happens today for behaviors? Let's say that behaviors are something that is not cataloged. There's no scientific approach. There's no framework. There's no overview of which behaviors exist at the level of atomic red team. This is not mapped out. This is not something you can share in a structured graph format on MISP. So MISP does not really apply to this use case. But we have attackers using behaviors. We've seen people talk in, in presentations these last two days. For example, Linux Rensics with uh, Stefan Berger saying, if you only looked at your tools, you'd see them using these and these ways. We saw different Linux rootkits where you would know that the, the way that the rootkits are used and, and, and deployed are known. There's a future expected ways to do that that we don't know, but we know ways that it's done today. All these behaviors, all these ways that threat actors work or their tools work, this is not cataloged. And when something happens, let's say a new behavior is picked up, by a piece of malware or a threat actor. You have every suck in the whole world jumping to try to analyze what's going on here. How do I defend? Can I block it, prevent the risk from occurring? If not, can I detect and react to it? And you have this inefficiency at global scale where everyone is doing this at the same time. Every suck above a certain size will analyze threats if they are considered to be a threat to them and try to deploy countermeasures. That just doesn't work. Where MISP helps you do this at scale, sharing indicators and so on between yourselves in whatever communities of knowledge sharing you have built, or publicly, this doesn't exist for behaviors. And my statement is that there is a need to try to turn this into a more scientific approach so that we know which behaviors exist. We can catalog them. We can try to maybe chain them together to see what comes before and after, which alternatives exist, and so on. That leads me to the second point. Doing detection is hard, not least for the reason that there is no science behind. There is no 
established way of approaching, describing behaviors, it's too hard. It's a problem so complex that even MITRE, after they built the attack framework, where they aggregated everything into the library that means we can all communicate in the same language today when it comes to threats, they didn't fold that back down and map out everything relevant the threat actors were doing in a structured framework. That didn't happen. It's so complex that we've had SubT Casey Smith build the Atomic Red Team framework that others are still carrying forward today. We have tools like CubeHound, we saw earlier today, that showcase these types of attacks that you can do, these graphs you can move through a network or, or, or a Kubernetes cluster. And, and nobody sits down and finds a structured way to share that type of data. Which to, to me is, is a huge failing. And that leads me to the second controversial statement. And those of you who do CTI, you're probably going to take offense. I apologize in advance. Please don't. It just means that I consider there to be room for improvement. CTI teams today, and now you're going to get offended, mostly produce non-actionable output while trying to call it actionable. They, they tend to look at what everyone else is doing, which also doesn't work, and try to replicate that, producing massive data by databases of IOC data that cannot really effectively be used either for detection engineering or for putting in place proactive controls that can mitigate risk at scale or, or even specific risks here and there. And then they're just building these databases of data that nobody really knows how to use except to do management reporting, which in my opinion should be the third and last goal of any CTI team. So to, to help that, to alleviate that, sorry, phone calling. I actually want to give you a solution. There's a way forward and it's a bit of a sales talk for a workshop that will start at 4.15 today with Remy Sigui and Ambison in one of the workshop rooms. It's a framework that we have built and open sourced called Open Tide, which allows you to solve all the problems I've tried to describe and turn the, the science, the, the profession, the process of detection engineering, which in my opinion includes threat hunting as part of the detection engineering process, but that's another controversial statement probably, to turn that into a, a structured approach that builds a kind of a best practice for how you come to a detection team and say, we would like you to detect that. Because we have today a massive duplication of effort in SOCs for detection teams when people ask them to detect, because we have all these experts, red teams, who, for example, they know exactly what happens behind the scenes in Cobalt Strike if you click on the deploy keylogger. It's a button for a red team in the UI. You click deploy keylogger. A lot of things happen behind the scenes. Automation runs. And as John Lambert would say, there's a series of traces that are left in a system when you deploy that keylogger. But this isn't described anywhere. Not in a structured format. So, so we have built a tool that allows you to do that at scale for anything that you need to describe at any level of granularity required. And with that, I think I'll finish my lightning talk and, and propose that you go to the Open Tide workshop at 4.15, open source tooling to help you maybe do your jobs better in building a graph that can be used for detection engineering. Thank you.